that is a broken toe. So you may remember uh, from my last vlog, I was doing a trail run in Bobbin Head at the Sphinx Trail. And towards the end, it was about two kilometers from the finish of the trail run, I managed to stub my toe. Uh, here's that moment. Aha! So, I stubbed my toe. I heard a sort of rustling noise near me. Just made me jump a little bit. Threw my foot forward, wasn't thinking properly. And, uh, yeah, stubbed my toe. And I thought it mustn't be too bad because I can still run. Uh, I still actually went another two kilometers after that stubbing of my toe until I finished the run and things weren't really getting any better. Later that night, I started to get a bit of bruising and uh, still like the pain just didn't really go away. Uh, and by the next day, it was starting to go a bit blue. <laughs> so I decided to go see a doctor as soon as I could. Uh, they suspected a broken toe. So to make sure like we can figure out which toe was broken, or which part of the toe was broken, they sent me for an x-ray. So I went off, got the x-ray, came back later that day to the doctor and they confirmed, yes, you have a broken little toe, broken pinky toe on my left foot. So there's multiple phases to a bone healing itself. There's the first phase, which is around the first week or thereabouts, which is where you're gonna see a lot of inflammation, bruising, blood pooling in that area, um, a lot of heat, uh, due to the inflammation and that is where the body is sort of preparing itself It's noticed that something's wrong and it's preparing itself to try and fix that thing that is wrong The bones then all start to move and try and push back together And that's where the next phase of the stitching or knitting of the bone back together starts occurring During this stitching and knitting phase it may get a little itchy uh, that's the bone itself knitting itself together and I know that mine has started that part of the phase because mine is starting to itch like crazy. Then after four-ish weeks, five, maybe six weeks, depending on the severity of the break, uh, your bone will be completely healed. It will have knitted itself together across that gap or fracture or hairline fracture or whatever the break was and you'll be good to go. If it's a much more severe break, like there's a complete dislocation of the bones and they're not aligned anywhere near where they should be, then the doctor or whoever it is may need to reset the bones into the right place before then limiting the movement of that area. So in my case, my toe. Luckily for me, my fracture wasn't too bad. It just had a chip off the edge and it's close enough that he didn't need to do any sort of resetting of the bone. It was all good to go just as is. Now, if you have a broken toe, how do you need to look after it? Well, the main thing uh, to begin with is to try and restrict the movement of that toe. Now for a bone, you wanna try and restrict the movement. So there are various ways that you can do that. Uh, if it's a bone such as your arm or whatever, where you can put a cast on it, that may be a very good option. But for other bones, such as the ribs, the toes, even for the fingers, uh, you can't really put a cast on them. I've broken my thumb before and I had sort of a, a thumb brace, which had metal bits in it to restrict the movement of the thumb. But the toe, there's not really much you can do. Uh, in my case, I went down the route of buddy taping. So buddy taping is one way that you can restrict the movement of a toe where you tape the toe next to the one next to it so your toe has a little buddy you still need to be careful of course if you were to scrunch your feet up or move your toes vigorously or also just walking downstairs any sort of movement that would physically bend the toe itself you are going to be moving that toe and it is going to slow down the healing process of the bone. So where possible, please try and restrict movement to whatever bone is broken. The more you can restrict the movement, the faster it's going to heal. Does a broken bone completely rule you out from doing any exercise at all? No, not in the slightest. You just can't move that bone, so that area that has the break. But you can do exercises everywhere else. 
For instance, uh, for myself, you can do other leg exercises, keep the strength of the calf muscles, the quads, the hamstrings, all of that up as much as possible. Uh, also strength exercising of, uh, in my case, the Achilles. I can still do things around that. I've just got to make sure that I don't move the toes. And of course, I've broken my toe. That doesn't mean that I can't move my upper body. So of course I can do any strength exercises with my upper body as well, including my core. And doing core workouts and having a very strong core is very important for running. Uh, just if you've got a strong core, it'll just be so much easier to run and be able to run stronger and longer. So while I can't actually do any running over the next few weeks, I will be doing a lot of core workouts, uh, leg strength workouts, and some upper body workout as well. All right, so this is how to do buddy taping for a toe. First, you get your roll of exercise tape. Uh, peel off enough that it's going to wrap around the two toes. So probably about this much. I don't know, hard to tell. Cut off that section. Right, we now have our tape. Now for the toe, we want to tape those two toes together. So a little bit like this. So you bring it across the other toe first, wrap it around the back, bring this other toe in, try and keep it as tight as possible, uh, and then just tuck it in. Now you can also, if you want, use something to sit between the toes to try and reduce rubbing or whatever. But for the most part, like putting the two toes together, it's fine. And this uh, arrangement should be changed as often as required like when it starts to get a bit dirty it can stay on for a few days at a time uh, of course you can wash it in the shower that's what this tape is made for is to be able to sort of stay on and be washed and be on for a couple of days once it starts to get a bit dirty peel it off give your foot a bit of breathing space and then replace the tape once again so when i don't have the buddy taping the uh, inflammation and the toe itself, it just, it moves around a bit too much and you just feel like these little pricks of pain and movement and it's just a, not a great feeling. But when you put the buddy tape on, all of a sudden everything just seems to be so much better. So definitely recommend the buddy taping. It just fixes things. You can also use a boot or something else that completely restricts the movement of your foot. It depends on which toe is broken, where it's broken, and how badly it's broken. In my case, my doctor just recommended the buddy tape method. Another thing you can do to help lessen any pain or other symptoms uh, to do with the inflammation is to take anti-inflammatory medications such as ibuprofen, uh, aspirin, uh, diclofenac, which is also known as Voltaren. I've taken all of these at various times. Uh, at the moment, my doctor recommended something called Naproxen, which I believe is based off aspirin. And out of all of them, it's like a delayed release, so it lasts for an entire day. So it's a very useful anti-inflammatory to use, but you do need to get a prescription for the use of this anti-inflammatory from your doctor. Uh, this weekend, I was supposed to be doing the lion dance uh, as part of the Lunar New Year, um, Chinese New Year festivities. So jumping around with a lion head or as the tail of the lion, um, bouncing around, Unfortunately, with a broken toe, you can't really do that. For the first week especially, the treatment for the broken toe is to not do anything, keep the feet up. Unfortunately, that means that I have had to pull out of the lion dance, and I can't even really help out, because a lot of the lion dance involves walking around shopping centers, which I'm not really supposed to be walking that much this week. So, yeah, it's a real bummer that I can't be a part of the lion dance. And then also following on from the lion dance is uh, I'm supposed to be training for the ultra trail run. Uh, this week I was going to be doing another at least 10 kilometers, maybe more uh, trail run on the weekend. Um, so something significant or a long run. I've got about five or six weeks now 
until the six foot track marathon. This is a time where I really need to be putting in the kilometers and really should be doing as much training as possible. But unfortunately, with this broken toe, it's put me sort of out of action. I've been told by the doctor, no running for at least like three to four weeks. So that's gonna give me about two weeks worth of training for the ultra trail run. And two weeks for training for an ultra trail run is not ideal, absolutely not ideal. You should be putting in so much more than two weeks worth of training. So there is the option that I can pull out of uh, the six foot track marathon for this year if I need to. Uh, that will mean that I move across my entry to next year. Guaranteed entry and part of the entry cost would then be covered. But then there's also the possibility that it may be cancelled anyway this year or postponed at the very least due to the bushfires going through that area. So I can cancel up until the actual week of the event and I'm sure that by that point they'll have given a definite decision as to whether or not it's going ahead. So if it is going ahead then I may cancel, depends on how I feel. Uh, and if it is not going ahead, then hey, I've managed to dodge a bullet a little bit there and uh, breaking my toe isn't so bad. Luckily for me at the moment, my toe doesn't actually look too bad. Last week on Monday, it was brown and black and blue and all sorts of colors, but it seems to have settled down quite a lot throughout the week. Um, in fact, looking at it, it barely tell that it was broken, but if I put my other little toe next to it, you can tell that there is a significant difference in size between the two toes. So it is still fairly swollen and I need to make sure that I keep off that toe as much as possible and try to restrict the movement of that toe as much as possible. As per the x-ray, the break is right about there. So it's an actual full-on fracture of the bone off that sort of edge, um, which is, yeah, it's gonna be just a slow healing process over the next four or so weeks. Then my doctor has given me the okay to start running again, and he said that in the uh, ultra trail run in five to six weeks, I should be okay to do that. There should be no problem in me doing that. The problem is gonna be in the under training. Um, I know that a lot of the practice I've been trying to do with minimalist type shoes with really flexible soles is great in terms of foot strength, but if you're trying to restrict movement to a toe because you've got a broken toe, then flexible soles are not good. So I've been unfortunately having to walk for the last week in a very solid soled shoe. So unfortunately, I will not be doing any more trail runs over the next maybe three or so weeks. I was really hoping that I could take you on a few more trail runs around Sydney, show off a few really nice places. I'm sorry that I can't do that anymore. Thanks for watching. If you want more swim, bike, run and exercise content every week from here in Australia, then hit that like and subscribe button and I will see you in the next one. Cheerio.